1842, Scottish migrant Simon Scott selects an area of land to use as the first property in the South Burnett, an area that eventually becomes known as Toromeo. On July 5, 1847, Scott formally applied for a squatter's licence that covered an area of 200 square miles. This land was initially stocked with sheep, bought from nearby Collington Station. In 1851, Scott's first wife Christina passed away. It was around this time that construction on the stone-walled family cemetery began. The cemetery was first proclaimed in the Government Gazette on the 9th of February, 1878. The cemetery was constructed using the readily available source of granite. The rocks were held together using the questionable but effective mix of sour milk and termites nest. The man in charge of this arduous task of building and designing the wall was Charles Williams, who was eventually laid to rest just outside the cemetery walls when he passed away. Simon Scott himself was laid to rest in the cemetery in 1858 after falling to his death off a horse near a large bunion nut tree that still stands tall on the property today. By 1962, 15 graves have been dug, each withholding a Scott or Gillen family member. This cemetery is believed to be just one of two stone-walled family cemeteries in all of Australia, a monument to both craftsmanship and history. The beginning of 2011 sees an unprecedented amount of rain fall through many parts of Queensland, including the South Burnett. Contour lines become creeks, creeks become raging rivers, and ledges become waterfalls. Toromeo Creek rises and becomes a raging torrent. This creek winds its way through the countryside and passes by next to the Stonewall Cemetery at Toromeo Station. On January 9, 2011, the Toromeo Creek swells so much that it not only reaches the stone walls of the cemetery, it breaches them completely. There is so much force behind the raging torrent of water that the 160-year-old stone walls crumble. The water then crashes into the cemetery's marble headstones, toppling every single one of them. The next day, the floodwaters subside enough so that an inspection of the damage can be carried out. 95% of the wall has been destroyed. The devastation is hard to comprehend. Yeah, well that was devastation. Uh, just to see everything flattened was unbelievable. To see the wall and the headstones all flat on the ground. It's hard to believe. So after 160 years of standing tall, a symbol of where it all began for the area, this piece of craftsmanship is now just a pile of rocks. A full rebuild would be incredibly expensive and require a lot of hard work by a lot of people. The chances of the wall rising from the rubble look bleak. Over one and a half years pass by and the Toromeo Stonewall Cemetery still lays in pieces on the ground. In spite of this, however, there has been action taking place. The South Burnett Regional Council's General Manager of Communities, Eleanor Sharp, has been lobbying both the state and federal governments for grants to help pay for the reconstruction efforts of the cemetery. After the floods, we tried to get funding from QRA, Queensland Reconstruction Authority. We weren't successful, but after extensive lobbying and applications, we managed to get um, around about $180,000 from both the state and federal government. Um, most of it from the federal government, about $150,000, and the remainder from the state. This money will be put towards the rebuilding of the stone walls, as well as the restoration of the damaged headstones from the cemetery. On the 28th of July 2012, a team of around 30 people from the local community volunteer their time to start the restoration process. Their task is a simple but arduous one, to tidy up the area of destruction. The volunteers spend the majority of their time clearing the piles of rocks and sorting them into piles from near where they were found. This will hopefully aid the stonemasons when trying to rebuild the wall as close to its original design as possible. Mm -hmm. 
the volunteers continue to work hard throughout the day, many of whom had little idea of the historic significance of the cemetery. I was amazed that um, some of the people had never actually been to the cemetery and they really learnt a lot um, about the history of the region. At the end of the day, the hard-working volunteers are treated to a lunch provided by the local SES. Their efforts have yielded impressive results, with the ruins being neatly organised so that the wall can finally begin to rise from the ground. A month later, the operation to restore the cemetery to its former glory continues. A team from Toowoomba arrived to load damaged headstones onto the back of a truck so that they can be taken away for restoration at their workshop. The majority of the headstones are made from marble and are in a weakened condition. This makes lifting them a potentially hazardous operation, as they are not only heavy, but fragile as well. A crane on the back of the truck is used to lift them, and eventually the headstones make it safely onto the back of the truck. A number of trips will be required to take all of the headstones back to Toowoomba for restoration. It's going to be a lengthy process. In the meantime, however, stonemasons Roy Welling and his son Jeff set to work with their team to start the difficult task of rebuilding the wall. A wall that must be as accurately matched to the original as possible. Not an easy task when there are no plans to work from. Thankfully though, there are a number of photographs that have previously been taken of the wall that the stonemasons can use for reference. The photos really were very helpful. Without those photos it would have been a lot harder. And some of the larger stones, we tried to get them back in their original positions just to, just to keep that visual integrity the same. They must also use period accurate materials, such as lime based concretes as opposed to the fully modern day cements. We used 10 sand, uh, 1 cement and 1 lime mixture all the way through. Normally when we do a lot of our stone work we use a boncrete mix, so that's been a, something different for us too, working with hydrated lime. It's a bit more difficult to mix and it's, it takes a lot longer to cure than standard cement. So, Work on the reconstruction is hard and provides new challenges for even this experienced masonry team. You know, things like the crenellated edge on the top and the rollover, we hadn't done anything like that before, so that was all a bit of something new for us as well. So, And we had to do a lot of regrouting and fix some of the old structure up as well, so there was a bit of, you know, a bit of a finishing off old stuff as well as creating new stuff and trying to keep everything in, in theme and keep the uh, heritage integrity about it. Not only does the wall itself need to be rebuilt, but the steel hand railings along a small concrete bridge that crosses the creek to the cemetery need to be replaced as well. The sheer force of the flooded creek managed to rip out the steel poles from their concrete base. New, sturdier poles are attached in such a way that it will be unlikely for them to be washed away any time soon. Yeah, new base plates are made out of 12 mil galvanised plate, thick plate. Original ones were only 5, 6 mil. Uh, posts are made out of 75, uh, 65, 65, 4 mil. And the, they're held down with, with uh, 16 mil galvanised true bolts. So they're construction grade true bolt, so all good. The reconstruction efforts continue throughout the hot spring weather. Stone by stone, the wall starts to rise from the ground. Meanwhile, the refurbished gravestones start to arrive back from Toowoomba. These are then slotted back into the ground and cemented firmly in place. Decades worth of grime are cleaned off using a high powered gurney. Water must be used as cleaning chemicals could affect the aging marble. With the headstones now looking brand new, the stone wall itself is also well and truly on the road to recovery.
the majority of the wall has been completed by the 14th of November 2012. And then, on the 28th of November, after a total of 32 days of hard work, the final stone is placed into the wall. Yahoo! Time to retire. There you go. <laughs> so at last, it is finally finished. The end result is a wall being an almost stone-by-stone -stone replica of the original, built over 160 years ago. There is, however, one key difference that wasn't included in the original. And also there's a time capsule uh, put in the wall by the Cybernet um, uh, Council with all the names of the volunteers and the workers who worked on the project. It's hidden in the wall somewhere. It's only the council who knows where it is. And ourselves. A worthy addition to this beautifully crafted wall, meaning that those members of the community who spared their time to help rebuild this piece of the area's history can be part of the wall's history long into the future. There is now just one thing left to do, officially reopen the cemetery in a celebration that will not only allow members of the community to view the results of this painstaking rebuild, but to thank those involved with the rebirth of one of the area's most important historical sites. February 23rd, 2013. It is time for the newly rebuilt Stonewall Cemetery to be unveiled to the public. Marquees, seating, generators and catering have all been put in place to ensure the ceremony runs smoothly and is able to cater for the number of people who are attending. Over 150 people make the journey in to see the refurbished stone wall and cemetery. Some are locals, whilst others have travelled as far from Brisbane to visit the cemetery for the first time. With the crowd having arrived and looked over the cemetery, the ceremony begins. For those who I haven't met, my name is Eleanor Sharp. I'm the General Manager for Communities with South Burnett Regional Council. I've been involved with the Turamio Cemetery restoration. Um, it seems like a lifetime. It has only been two years uh, since the cemetery was destroyed. Eleanor Sharp gives a speech about the operation of rebuilding the wall. She also gives thanks to the government for funding the project, as well as the volunteers from the community who offered their time to help with the rebuilding efforts. Each of the volunteers receives a silver key ring with their name engraved upon it. A duplicate of each of the key rings is stored in the time capsule that is hidden amongst the rebuilt stone wall of the cemetery, forever binding those volunteers that helped out to this piece of history. Three plaques are also unveiled during the ceremony, outlining the history, the disaster, and the rebuilding of the Stonewalled Cemetery. After the speeches, a local pastor leads a group of those who are descendants of the people laid to rest within the cemetery to the gate of the stone wall, so the blessing of the rebuilt cemetery can commence. And I bless this cemetery in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the Toronto Cemetery be a resting place for all those who wait for the coming of Christ. Amen. To begin with, the destruction of the Toronto Stonewalled Cemetery was a complete catastrophe. A piece of history was seemingly destroyed. But in the process of rebuilding the walls after the flood, there was a renewal in the interest of this valuable historic site. It showed the community the historic importance of this landmark. It also brought the community together to help rebuild it, showing the strength that can be found in times of disaster. A strength reflected in these new, sturdier walls that pay tribute not only to the men who originally built them, but to those laid to rest within them. <laughs>